What's up, fears, and welcome to the World Crypto Network. We are continuing our reading of the Bitcoin Optech Group newsletter. Thank you very much to all the contributors to this great open source organization. And today, newsletter number 37 on March 12th, 2019. This week's newsletter notes a vulnerability in Bitcoin Core versions that are already past end of life, asks for help testing release candidates for the next major version of Bitcoin Core, provides an update on the Bitcoin Dev mailing list, describes the recent discussions from that list, and links to a chapter about payment batching in Optech's work in progress scaling technique book. Also included are descriptions of several notable commits in popular Bitcoin infrastructure projects. Action items. Ensure you are not running an old Bitcoin Core version, as Suhas Daftuar disclosed a vulnerability affecting Bitcoin Core version 0.13 until version 0.13.2. Note that those releases have been past the end of life for several months. The vulnerability would not allow or would allow an attacker to convince your node that a valid block was invalid, forking you off the consensus blockchain and making it possible to trick you into believing that you've received confirmed Bitcoin you would actually not uh, control. In addition to checking for old versions of Bitcoin Core in your infrastructure, it is also recommended that you check for altcoins whose nodes have been based on the affected Bitcoin Core versions. See the disclosure details below for more information. Help test Bitcoin Core's release candidate of version 0.18.0. The first release candidate for the next major version of Bitcoin Core has been released. Organizations and experienced users who depend upon Bitcoin's core uh, are highly encouraged to test it for regressions and other problems that could affect your use of its production. Any testing is appreciated, but if you have some extra time after testing for your specific use cases, please consider helping test the 0.18's changes to the graphical user interface. The interface is primarily used by less experienced users who are unlikely to test release candidates themselves, but who would be especially affected by any problem that slips through. News, the Bitcoin Dev mailing list status update. The service outage reported in last week's newsletter has been resolved, but list administrators are planning to migrate to another solution. Many posts sent in the past two months or two weeks have been relayed to list subscribers, but some have been lost. If you do not see your post in the February or March archives, please resend it. Future Optech newsletters will mention any action list subscribers need to take in order to continue to receive protocol discussions. Bitcoin Core vulnerability disclosure. As Suhas Daftur has disclosed a novel method for tricking earlier Bitcoin Core versions into rejecting a valid blocks. If an attacker created a block with two transactions whose 23-byte hash transaction IDs, when con uh, concatenating together, appear to be a 64-byte transaction, it's possible to create two different interpretations of the Merkle tree rooted in the block header, one where the tree points to a single invalid 64 byte transaction and one where it points to two valid transactions. Similar conflicting versions can also be created with more than two transactions. And we see this here uh, from uh, yeah, uh, from Suha's Daftuar's closure document in a graphical version. This can create a problem for Bitcoin Core as normally if it rejects a block as being invalid it will add the header hash of that block to a cage uh, so that it does not have to waste resources requesting or reprocessing that block again. This allows an attacker to send your node the invalid form of a block subsequently uh, to prevent your nodes from processing its valid form or any blocks that descend from it, forking you off the chain. A similar vulnerability was disclosed in 2012 uh, as this CVE, and Bitcoin Core has adapted them to not cage invalidity for blocks whose Merkle tree contains ambiguities. However, 
an optimization implemented in Bitcoin Core version 0 0.13 reintroduced this caching problem and necessitated a fix, which was included in Bitcoin Core version 0 0.14. Daftour's email includes a very informative PDF that not only describes this specific problem in detail and shows its cost to be a very small 30 bits of brute force work, although you also need to mine a custom block but which also describes another known vulnerabilities possi uh, possible with Bitcoin's Merkle tree and calculates the average amount of brute force work to exploit them. Daftour did not find any instances of the attack to date in the current consensus blockchain. We have a cleanup soft fork proposal discussion. This week saw discussions about the consensus cleanup soft fork proposal described in last week's newsletter. Russell O'Connor raised the concern that invalidation of the opcode separator opcode could prevent existing UTXOs and using the opcode from being spent. It's not possible to detect this because people could have paid money <coughs> to a pay to script hash address whose not yet revealed redeem script uses the discouraged opcode. O'Connor's proposed to mitigate the problem of opcode separators being used to increase the worst case block verif verification time by increasing, uh, by instead increasing the weight of transactions whose evaluate scripts contain the opcode. This, this would reduce the maximum number of opcode separators that could be combined within a block while also likely reducing the overall size and total number of operations in the block to the point where it could be verified reasonably quickly. O'Connor also raised a similar concern regarding the soft forks proposal to invalidate the unallocated SIGHASH type bytes. It is also not possible to entirely detect this because Bitcoin users may have created pre-signed lock time transactions for which they have lost or destroyed the signing keys, preventing them from creating a new signature. Instead of increasing the weight of the unallocated SIGHASH bytes to restrict their use, he recommends one of a more complex SIGHASH cache, as also previously described in, as an option in the proposed bit. And Matt Carollo replied to both of O'Connor's concerns by pointing out that although he cannot detect usage of these features for spenders, they have not been broadcasted and we can detect them for any transaction in the existing chain. And that usage does not exist. I'm seriously skeptical that someone is using a highly esoteric scheme and has just been powering money into it without ever having tested it or ever withdrawing any money from it whatsoever, said Corolo, before also discussing the amount of extra complexity for calculating fees and caging SIG hashes if these features are not disabled. His rebuttal also included a plea for anyone using transaction features that are not relayed or mined by default, these non-standard transactions, to contact Bitcoin Core developers and let them know about the situation so that the policies can be reconsidered. <coughs> Feedback requested on SIGnet. Carl Joan Alm has been working on alternative to Bitcoin's testnet that uses centrally signed blocks instead of proof of work. Although this does not allow testing the decentralized nature of Bitcoin, it could, it could make the testing network much more convenient to application developers by provi providing regular block production most of the time, plus scheduled tests of adverse events such as blockchain reorganizations or fee spikes. It would also ensure the central signing authority always had test coins to distribute via their faucet. By comparison, test net block producers is sometimes too fast for peers to keep up or too slow that it's useless for testing. Faucets are often empty and grievers can create reorg scenarios that would be extremely unlikely to exist on a network with actual value at stake. Elm is seeking feedback and would like to eventually incorporate his code into Bitcoin Core and probably have another node implementation support it too. 
removal of BIP61 peer-to-peer reject message. Michael Falke stated in a thread seeking feedback about the desire to remove BIP61 reject messages from Bitcoin Core. When your node receives a message, such as a transaction, that has a problem, your node will return a reject message that contains a description of the problem. BIP61 messages are not trustless. Your node could lie. And the information and the same information about problems can be extracted from the rejecting node's logs, uh, which allows developers to investigate problems with messages sent to their own nodes. See newsletter 13 for our discussion on Falk's pull request that disables re the reject messages by default in Bitcoin Core. Andreas Schildbach, a wallet author and lead maintainer of the popular Bitcoin J library, requested keeping the message and re-enabling them by default. This user, his, his user's email, him log files containing reject messages when their transaction do not go through, helping him to debug problems. In response, Gregory Maxwell pointed out that even when an honest node accepts a transaction, that does not mean that it will also be accepted uh, by that node's peers. That means clients still not still need to monitor for transaction propagation without using BIP61 and making six BIP61 thus redundant for that purpose. Similarly, transactions being uh, paying a minimum fee rate may take weeks longer to confirm than the users desired them in the default size mempools are full. Finally, verification nodes are designed to maximize performance, which often conflicts in the, with the ability to provide maximally useful debugging information to random untrusted peers. Extension fields to the partially signed Bitcoin transaction. As Andrew Polstra proposed the, additional, the addition of several fields to the PSBT to help support several new features. He also proposed making one currently required field optional. These new fields can help clients determine whether a op check sequence verify condition is satisfied. Support the full range of scripts it's possible to generate with Miniscript and include extra data for use with the MUSIC, pay-to-contract, and sign-to-contract protocols. BIP174 author Andrew Chow appeared, uh, appeared receptive to most of the suggestions. Review of Bitcoin's privacy literature publisher. Chris Belker published an extended summary of various privacy concerns present in Bitcoin. The page and the wiki's related privacy categories provide an excellent strategy or starting point for anyone researching Bitcoin privacy concerns. Version two of the address message proposed. Vladimir Vandelan has proposed creating a BIP for a new version of the peer-to-peer -peer protocol address message. The existing message communicates the IP address or onion cat encoded for Tor hidden service. And that is the dot onion name of a node. It's port and a bitmap of the service the node provides. However, since the release of the original Bitcoin code base, Tor has upgraded their hidden service addresses to use 256 bits, preventing them from being used in Bitcoin's existing address message. There are also other network overlay protocols, uh, such as I2P, that also use longer addresses. The proposed BIP, impl if implemented, will provide support for these protocols. And Optag published a book chapter about payment batching Paying multiple people in the same transaction can reduce the average transaction fee cost per payment by more than 70%. The technique is especially convenient for high frequency spenders, such as exchanges. As part of Optech's ongoing work to create a guide to individually deployable scaling techniques, we're publishing our draft chapter that describes this technique and its trade-offs in details. And I will provide a reading of this chap draft chapter in one of the next episodes. Notable code and documentation changes this week in Bitcoin Core, LND, C Lightning, Eclair, LipSecP 256K1, and the Bitcoin improvement proposals. 
Note that Bitcoin Core currently has work being performed on both its master development branch and the branch for the upcoming 0.18 release. So we've noted which branch each Bitcoin Core merge affects. This Bitcoin Core merge generalizes how Bitcoin Core stores and retrieves data associated with blocks and UTXO changes in order to make it easier for new, me for new methods to store and retrieve other information in the same way. This was done to allow reusing the mechanism for storing a bit 157 compact block filters on disk. This is currently part of the master development branch only. This Bitcoin Core merge removes the depreciated generate RPC used for creating blocks in rec test mode. This RPC was previously sup su superseded by the generate to address RPC, which does not require the node to be built or run with wallet support. This is part of the master development branch only. And the last Bitcoin core change here changes the use of the output script descriptors in multiple RPCs to use consistent range notations for deriving multiple addresses from a descriptor within a bit 32 hierarchical deterministic wallet path. This is part of the 0 0.18 branch and the 0 0.18 release candidate one release. This LND change puts more gossip traffic in a queue in a queue rather than sending it immediately so that higher priority information is more likely to be handled quickly. Gossip traffic is used for communicating which peers are on the network and what channels they have available. The seal lightning change removes the address field from the new address RPC and replaces it with either a BEC32 field or a pay to script hash segwit field, depending on the address type requested, or both fields if an optional all parameter is passed to the RPC. Then address, the address type in each field is consistent with its name. Here's you gotta subscribe to the Bitcoin Optech newsletter, a organization handled by great entrepreneurs and great coders here in Bitcoin. Thank you very much. Here's and see you on the next show. Bye bye.